Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. Today we are talking about selecting, selecting signals. Okay. <coughs> Why are we doing this? Why are we selecting signals? Because we only want to have one of a bunch of them. So we have something, some element here. It has one output, only one, and it has several inputs. How many is not defined? A number. Inputs. Yeah? So we have many inputs, call it many. one output and now with this element with this multiplexer i can select which input i want to have for instance this one Chuck. i select the first input one input can be selected to appear at the output. One input. This is called a multiplexer. So this is a multiplexer. Also called MUX. What is this good for? Yeah. Somewhere at another point, I have a different element. So here. And this different element has exactly one input. And how many outputs? Exactly the same amount. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six outputs. Many outputs. Huh? One input. And here we have many outputs. Huh? And here I can select at which output the input shall appear, for instance, this one. All right. One output can be selected to show the state of the input. Right, and this thing here is called demultiplexer. Mul multiplexer or demux. Right, and if I connect those two with a line. and always switch them at the same point in time, I can transfer over one line uh, a bunch of signals. All right, so at the second point in time, I have maybe have selected this one and here this one. So it's always switching tick, 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 tick. triggered or, or somehow at the same point in time and suddenly I can transfer a lot of signals over a single line. Yeah. For instance, serial communication is producing that way. We have here one byte, we have here one byte, and we will transfer one bit after the other. And at the end, when I'm at, at the eighth in output, a full byte has been transferred. 
Yeah? And in between, I only need one line. So this is the reason for multiplexing. Yeah? How to achieve this now? Yeah? Show you one possibility, how a multiplexer is working. Yeah? So multiplexer. Max. A one max or two max yeah? with two inputs can work that way that we have two ends and we have an OR. So we have an end here. Here we have an end. Here we have an OR. We're combining the outputs of the two ends. This is our one output. Uh, call it Q. This is our one output, Q. And then we have input signals. Two of them. So here we have I0 and I1, yeah. and we have a selection line. Yeah. We have a selection line. However, here I only let things pass if the selection line's line is zero, and here I let things pass if the selection line is one. Yeah. Here, zack, this is the selection. Yeah. So, if selection is zero, this will always be zero here. Yeah. Yeah. And this will whatever state I0 is. So at the output will appear I0. With 0, I select I0. With 1, I select I1. Because this will always be 0. This is exactly how a multiplexer is working. Alright? So this is a multiplexer. There is even a symbol for this. Looking like that. Try it a little bit bigger now. It's written in MUX, so that we know what we are dealing with. Then it has three inputs. And one output. The output, of course, is named Q. Huh? Here we have the selection as zero, yeah? and depending if it goes into selection line one, yeah? and if it's not, here we must have I zero, and here we have I one. Right? So this is a selection of two, a multiplexer with two input signals, yeah? which can be selected. It's pretty, it's pretty fast, fo fast forward, it's straightforward, it's straightforward, of course. It's pretty straightforward, right? This is how a MUX is working. Yeah? In next video, I show you combinations with more than two inputs. Yeah? So how, how could we achieve that we are not only having two inputs, but we are having four. Let's make four yeah? in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.